What's going on YouTube? This is Jim and IG7 again. Um, it's been a minute that I have done any recordings and the reason why I haven't been recording lately uh, my mom passed away about a month ago and it's been very hard um, to do anything even recording brief you guys or even working it's been really hard on me it's um a struggle i've been traumatized you know when i see my mom in the coffin and all that that really bothers me a lot to this day when i go to sleep i wake up like two three times a night um crying and i wake up and i think about my mom um working is slow very slow um before this week and last week last week was not so great but every like for the past three weeks well four weeks you know i stayed home for like two weeks straight uh one due to my truck uh, something wrong with my truck and i got that fixed um something with the d uh, the d the def and i got that fixed so i was been in a truck in a truck sh truck st um shop for a whole week um, then I stayed home for the weekend and then, you know, with all this coronavirus and everything, we couldn't, you know, go out and go to work and people were mandatory to stay home due to the coronavirus. Uh, money's getting tight on my side as well. So I'm just trying to make it like everybody else and just try to stay head on strong and stay focused. It's, but it's hard to do that when I've been traumatized with my mom being passed away. Um, I, it still affects me to this day. Um, I haven't been recording videos for like about a month, about a little over a month now. Um, the, th the last three videos that has been posted on my YouTube was already scheduled to be posted on Friday every week. Um, <clears throat> my last video was my mom. My mom passed away. That was my last video. But the, the last three videos after that was already scheduled to be posted on Friday as I'm making these videos and editing them and and scheduled to be on uh, the, to be posted up on on YouTube every Friday for you guys to watch. Uh, I want to apologize for you guys for not giving you guys footage for the past two weeks that has been posted, it. and it's just been really hard, it's been really rough. Um, this week I ran some loads. Um, I didn't run that very hard. It was just pretty much take it easy. Um, it was a couple of times this week that me and my girl we stay out at the truck stop so we can deliver these loads um, sooner that we can get some more loads knocked out. Uh, due to that, it's just been chaotic. It's been stressful. It's been, um, you know, uh, loads are loads are slowing down, and you know, there are times that when I drive, I don't think straight. You know, I have my boy George. I haven't talked to him for like about a week and a half now. He's checking on me, see how I'm doing. He asked me if I'm working, stuff like that. Um, I'm still working, it's just, but I'm still traumatized, you know? Um, today's Friday, there's no load today. I did a load yesterday. Um, pick up in Carnage, Texas, to all the way to uh, Church, Texas, near San Antonio. Dropped that off early in the morning yesterday. And um, Jake didn't have a load with me uh, for yesterday, so we went home. Uh, we go home like around two o'clock um today uh there's no load today so i'm just gonna call it he told me to go to new Beverly and see if they got a load coming back to houston but i don't want to drive an hour up there and um they didn't have a load then have to drive about you have to head all the way back to houston and not get a load so i might just go and call it today and just take it easy just get my mind and get my focus back to normal you know i'm hoping everybody doing all right I want to thank you guys for all, all your support um, and your prayers for my mom. Um, loads on my side, they're they're decent, somewhat okay, not really great. I hope everything goes back to normal because there's all this coronavirus going on. So on your side, you know, you guys are doing your thing and and start to stay busy, and stay working, keep making money. You know, a lot, a lot of people are. Or working for our companies and restaurants, you know, they're shutting down because of due to coronavirus. Um, other than that, it's just been really rough. It's been hectic, and um, I still wake up at night and uh, can't sleep and stay asleep. 
wake up two, three times a night, think about my mom. For this past time of a whole month now that my mom has been buried in the ground, every Sunday I have to go to the temple and do a chant for my mom with the monk to give her safe passage to um, go with Buddha. Um, and maybe hopefully reincarnate next life, you know, and I want her to to have a good life, you know, since she's passed. Do I miss my mom? I miss my mom very, very much. Um, it's no doubt. If I, you know, when I told, when I found out, or when we all found out that my mom had stage four cancer, you know, during that time in 2007, I would give up my life to give my mom half of my life or my whole life so she can live longer. I would do that. Um, but that's life, you know, it doesn't work that way, you know? So I just been trying to stay strong and stay head on and just working and just trying to stay busy and try to get my sleep in and all that stuff and try to catch up with my sleep. I'm still playing catch up on my sleep. I'm, I, I'm still traumatized by my mom passing away. Uh, lately, my girlfriend's been very supportive. She's been here with me every night, every day, going to and from work every day, tag along with me to make sure I am okay. And um, her parents uh, also check up on me too as well. So lately, for this past three weeks, I've been going to her house on Saturdays and sometimes Fridays, if not working Friday, and just be with them and just check up on me and make sure I'm okay, you know? Um, they told me to look at um, Hannah's parents as my own, as, as my own, and my, uh, my own mom and dad. But to be honest, you know, it's very supportive. I really thank you for that. But you know, nothing cannot replace your mom. You know, so I never had a dad when I grew up. My dad left me when I was born. I was he was never there. I just never had. I never had a role model. I never had a dad. Um, just been doing my own thing and raised by my sisters. Um, the rest of my family still traumatized a little bit. I don't talk to them very much now, and everybody's just doing their own thing. Um, me on my situation, I can tell you that because I make my own videos and I tell you how I feel. I still feel tra traumatized. I still feel and see pictures. I save out all the memories of the pictures, and when I looked at, you know, my mom and and all the times I spent with her, I'm trying to keep good memories in my head. But there are times that I think about that, it, it leads to another, it leads to another, and I see my mom in the coffin, and it just bothers me a lot, you know? And all of this bothers me when I, when they put her coffin in the ground and put dirt over it, I just, the picture and, and the image stays stuck to my head, and I know that that won't go away. So I'm just trying to cope with it and, 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 and trying to um, not think negative thoughts and just try and move forward as I live in my life, go to work, and do new things that I need to do. There's a lot of things that I need to do in life too as well, I know that. Um, I'm just trying to stay headstrong, but it's hard. It's really, really hard. It's not easy. So it's like depression kicking in, a little bit of anxiety coming in in my head. And I'm just trying to stay focused, you know. I'll do it again. I want to say again for apologizing for you guys not giving you guys footage for this past month, month and a half. I haven't been recording. I don't feel, you know, I don't feel the same I was before um, when I'm making videos. I change. I know I change uh, in a way. I don't know about how much, but I don't focus on that because, you know, mom passing away and now work's going slow and then the coronavirus are everywhere now and then everybody's locked in and I try to go work and you know money's getting tight it's just a lot of things going on it was like all happening at once when my mom passed you know so it's like shit um that's all I have for right now um for an update I was I will still start doing recording videos again for you guys to watch just give me a little bit some time, um, but eventually I'll get back to, you know, the old routine, you know. Um, and I have all these nice equipment. I have two GoPros 8, I got a DJ Maverick, I got another camera I can use as a backup, you know. Um, my girlfriend's trying to buy a new car, once she get her car, old car back, she can fix and trade it in. 
my girlfriend hasn't been work over a month so she's upset at that so i've been taking care of her as i've been working too so it's like it's getting tired tired and tired um truck's been okay you know it's the same um she needs a truck wash big time i just never got around to it um we did a load yesterday and you know it's, she's filthy i need her to wash her big time she's really dirty right now um i want to thank you for you guys for your support and for your prayers and support of my youtube channel um things like that i really appreciate it uh, i'll be making videos again just give me a little time and you know um try and get back to the old routine i know i won't be the same as i used to be before um i'm still humble i'm still motivated i'm still driven it's just my mom you know it's i tell you guys one thing though if you guys have still have your mom and your dad and they're still existing in your life and still alive to this day spend as much time with them as much as you can because when they pass that's it there's no there's no going back once they pass they're gone forever no one can ever be replaced okay um time is the t time you cannot get back anybody can go to work anybody can make money anybody can do this they can do that but time the time always moves forward it never goes backward so if you still have your mom if you still have your dad you still have your parents love them spend time with them because when the time's up that's it um many many years back ago i was i heard a rumor saying that um i heard many rumors saying that nothing lasts forever and i was like well if you take care of your stuff things will last for a very very long time and i, I didn't believe that that uh that saying you know nothing lasts forever when my mom passed I finally realized that nothing does less and less, less forever. It, it comes and goes, you know. When your time is up, your time is up, you know. And we try to make the best of it. Um, I keep having thoughts in my head. It's like, man, I could have spent more time with my mom. I could have done other things, you know. But during the time I was busy and I was working, and I was working for Martin, I was working for Gemini, I was working for Golf Mark, I was working for In Lake Flint. It's just, you know hard and i know i could have done something better but i didn't but at that time i was so exhausted from work and away from home and not being home every day it's just been tough you know so i was like in my head like could i could i could i have done something better or spend time with my mom i think i could you know but now when she's gone do i feel a sense of regret i i don't i don't feel regret but I know I could have done something better and spent time with more with my mom, you know? So that's, that's what also bothers me too, you know? Um, but like I was saying, you know, if you have your mom and your dad still, still around, spend time with them. Because as you get older, they get older. And when the time comes, they go. It could be anything, you know? Uh, being sick uh, or just pass away of natural causes, you know? That's what I, how I want my mom to pass. But my grandpa passed like that. You know, he died at the age of, I think, 89, 88. Um, my mom has stage four cancer. She's been battling it for, for the past three, four years. Well, about three years. What really killed her was the ammonia. So her immune system was very, very weak for her age. And especially battling for stage four cancer at the same time the ammonia would have killed her. She couldn't hold on anymore. She was laying in bed every day, every week when I go see her for this past, uh, you know, month and a half, I go see her. She was just laying in bed, just not, not doing it, just laying there. We put her a lot of, um, I think morphine, painkillers, and it makes her head high. And when she tried to talk, I couldn't understand what she was saying. I had to put my ear real close to her to try to understand what she's trying to say. And she couldn't do much. She would just lay there, you know, lay there with her eyes open and her eyes closed, and just like you're really high, you know, like you couldn't do anything. Just like, you're, like, you're, like you're just really high on medication, you know. So they injected so much medication for pain because during the time when she was laying in bed for the first time, 
But that whole time, my period, her legs were hurting really bad and she was in pain. So that put a lot of morphine in her body. And every time I go see her, she was like, you know, she couldn't, she couldn't talk right. She couldn't think right. So, you know, the last time I spent time with her was when no, when, when I got there at the hospital, but the last time I saw her was, um, she was still alive, but no one was around. I was like, when the hell my sister go? When the hell my brother go? So I was there for three hours. My mom was thirsty. So I put a bottle, a super small bottle of water that uh, I was working a bottle. And I put a straw in it so she can drink water. She was thirsty and I had to keep doing it and doing it for my mom because no one was there. And I got my sister and I went the hell you what? Why you mean to leave mom like that? So I was like, they want to go ahead and do things down in the Southwest. I don't know what they were doing. And apparently they were getting ready for the funeral and burial and pay for all that in advance and everything. That's what they were doing. I said, well, mom ain't passed away yet. So why you guys do that? So that's the last time I saw her though. She was still alive, a little bit moving, still high on medication, all that stuff. Next week, after that week, that's when she passed. I was like, man, then that would, that would, that terrified me. When I got there, she died on March 8th of 2020 at 2 p.m. No, at, at, at 1.45 p.m. She passed away at 1.45 p.m. That day, I was, it was the same routine. I would go down to visit my mom at the hospital to see if she's okay. If anything she needs, I'll get it for her. And when I got there at 2 p.m., I was 15 minutes late, she was gone. When I got there, I bust and crying. I still got, I still remember all that whole day, what happened that day. I, I, it still bothers me to this day, you know? Like I said, I'm still traumatized, you know, with a lot of things going on. Uh, I've been going through a lot. It's just hard. It's really hard going through this process. If it wasn't for my girlfriend, I wouldn't be able to move forward, to be honest with you, because I have no one else to talk to. My my fam my sisters and brothers are doing their own thing. They got a business to run. They got to take care of their own family. I don't have a family yet, you know, so it's hard. You know, it's hard. And thankfully that I have my girlfriend, she's being very supportive taking care of me, make sure I sleep, make sure I eat, and just take care of me. There are times that, you know, when I wake, when I wake up at, you know, two, three times at night, and it's time for me to go to work, if Jake gave me a load, she, the alarm goes off, I don't even hear it sometimes, and she wakes me and says, hey, it's time to go to work, it's, we gotta go, so. That's why I wanna thank you for my girlfriend for being very supportive and being there for me this whole entire time. Um, she goes with me to, the temple for enchantment for Sunday. Well, matter of fact, we gotta, we gotta go this Sunday again for my mom. But that's what's been going on. Uh, I wanna apologize for the inconvenience of me not posting videos not lending lately. It's just been really, really hard for for me going back to my my old self, my old self being, and get back in the routine. It's just been really hard. So I just want to apologize for the inconvenience again, okay? And thank you again for your support of and subscribe, subscribe to my channel. There'll be some more videos. It's just give me a little bit. I need, I need, I need to get back in that situation. Um, it's just been really hard. That's all I have right now. Um, so I guess I got you guys later, right? Peace. We are the music makers. And we are the dreamers of dreams. What's going on, you guys? This is Gemini G7 again. I'm over here at San, San Augusta, Augustine, Texas, getting loaded. And uh, you know, with these. So, it's a good way. It's about three hours drive to get here out of here. It's a nice little mill. You can see it. I didn't bring my GoPro, so um, I didn't think about it. And you know, I'm going, still going through a lot of women involved and everything with her passing, so I'm just trying to make it. But yeah, let me show you guys around. So, you got a whole bunch of wood over here. Nice open space. Let's show the trees down over here, some more over here a little bit. So, I'm getting low with these. So, he's loading me right now.
What's going on guys, this is Jim and I G7 again. So today is Saturday and I'm over here taking uh, my girlfriend's dad to help him get his CHL for a concealed handgun license. Um, right now he's in the range and I didn't bring my GoPro and just started doing it right now. So um, there he is doing his uh, thing. Um, don't want to let me go back there and, and help him, uh, you know, hold a gun and all that as, as a C -C HL instructor. He has to he has to do everything on his own, and and he has to teach him how to hold it. Usually, I have my way of doing things, and you know how to teach him how to shoot, know, know the law, know the safety, know the gun safety, and all that. So it's like, I think it's ten people. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So he's over here, number nine. The instructor right there teaching her how to. Well, I don't know something going on here, but I'm doing something here. Uh, but yeah, I'm just, you know, help him out, try to get, help him get a CHL. Catch you guys later. Peace.